which is preordained. So, uh, no. I mean, look, these guys are uh, not stupid. I mean, in order to create a, you know, any kind of nuclear weapon, it would be very visible. Given our satellite technology, we would know about it immediately. So that would provoke a conflict, and that's what they don't want. I mean, these guys have been at war constantly since since the Ayatollah Khomeini took power, first with Iraq, uh, you know, now kind of with us. Um, and I think that they want a break. Well, uh, you make a good point about the lack of evidence for Iran uh, developing, having a nuclear weapon program, but what the heck, then, is causing Obama and the whole state apparatus to be so damn belligerent towards them? I mean, it clearly isn't a matter of the non-proliferation treaty, as our client state Israel hasn't even signed it. it I, I don't buy the human rights explanation. We're allied with Saudi Arabia, for God's sake. I mean, they have in what I would consider de facto slavery of women in that country. So... What's the motive here? Is this just a matter of appeasing special interests? Do the politicians envision some noble ultimate agenda that, at least in their view, justifies uh, the mass slaughter of innocent people through a war? Or are these guys just a bunch of sociopaths that actually enjoy this stuff? Well, you know, I think the sociopaths are really the neoconservatives who, who are not in at least total control of this administration. Um, but, I mean, I think you have to look at at the basic continuity of American foreign policy and, you know, the complete phoniness of this, you know, promise of change. Because, of course, American foreign policy hasn't basically changed since the end of World War II. And our goal um, has, has always been to expand the empire. Uh, and that's what we're doing now. And we did it under Bush, and we're doing it under Obama. And if you look... At the, at the recent actions of the U.S. government overseas, you see we went into Iraq and we went into Afghanistan, and, of course, in between those two entities is Iran. And so we're moving upward toward Russia, toward the great oil, oil bonanza uh, in, in, the, in, in the various stands up there, like Kazakhstan and Turkmenistan and all those ex-Soviet republics, which have a lot of the world's oil. So, uh, I mean, it's all about the empire. Empires expand, and, and they have to expand or else they die. And, uh, of course, the big problem is that we're a bankrupt empire. So how we're going to pull that one off is unknown to me, or how they think we're going to pull that off is is rather a mystery. Let's move on to how we're going to pull this off, meaning um, politically, I know you may be sort of apathetic about that. When I talk to older libertarians, at least uh, radicalized, principled types, they tend to be a little bit more pessimistic about political movements, but to me at least, it seems a sort of ideological confusion and lack of real change or principle gives real libertarians an opportunity. Organizations like Young Americans for Liberty and Campaign for Liberty have really been gaining steam since the Paul campaign in 2008, which I think is quite rare following the end of political campaigns, which generally are uh, personality-driven. In an era where family values Republicans like John Bolden think it's okay to drop nuclear bombs on Iranian infants, and peacenik Democrats like Code Pink stand silent before the massacres of their favored god king, do you see an opening for people making an uncompromising case for peace and liberty to persuade and educate a broad constituency to our position? Well, I, you know, I am not pessimistic at all. I am very optimistic. And, of course, Yao is one of the reasons for that. And the campaign for liberty and the Ron Paul phenomenon and the whole movement that is based not on his personality but on Ron's ideas. And so... Uh, I mean, I have never seen, I mean, anything like this. I mean, you have to remember, I come from a time when the libertarian movement was a bunch of teenagers putting out little mimeograph magazines, and we had maybe about 300 guys. <laughs> okay? So, you know, it was kind of an underground movement uh, and a very well-kept secret. Uh, and now 
we have Ron Paul's on TV practically every day. I, you know, I turn on the TV and he's, you know, he's there giving his opinion. And of course, the Ron Paul campaign was just amazing. And you know, the one thing that makes me sad is that if Murray Rothbard had been alive today, he would have really enjoyed this because this is precisely the kind of populist movement that he envisioned. And now, of course, there's tremendous ideological turmoil on the American right. These people have been brought to the brink of disaster by the neocons. And, uh, you know, they're sitting there, they're, you know, like looking at the wreckage of the GOP and going, where do we go from here? This is great, because, of course, we have the answer. And we're the only organized ideological grouping in the GOP and outside of it, really, on the American right, that has a program, that has an organization, and most importantly, has a youth organization. Because, of course, youth is the future. And it, it really, really gladdens my heart to see that YAL is such a success. And anything I can do to help, just let me know, guys and girls, because it is... It is really, I had despaired of a libertarian movement. You know, I'd always said, well, you know, the objective conditions are great for our success, but the subjective conditions, that is, the organizations that we have, were always a mess. But now we have CFL and we have YAL, and all's right with the world. <laughs> well, thank you so much for the kind words, Justin. In terms of uh, your promise of help, I'll be sure to forward that on to my bosses. And we do have a lot of fun. Um, that's one of the things about Yal. Um, my experience just on the blog and, and activism, it's a lot of fun to try to persuade people and just to write whatever you're thinking about these modern issues. All right. Well, Justin, thank you so much for coming on. We're Have fun. He says